Have you ever been so hungry you could eat a horse? Well, that would be better than eating any of this stuff, because this stuff will kill you. That's right, today we're talking about toxic meat. First up, we have several species of poisonous birds that live in Papua New Guinea. There are several species of Shrek thrush, several species of Pitui, and the blue-capped Ifrit. You may be wondering why these birds are toxic. Well, it's not because they play League of Legends, it's because there's a beetle in their area called the Chorsine beetle. These beetles and these birds all contain what is called Batrachotoxin. This toxin is actually very similar to what is found in some poison dart frogs in South America. It seems that over time, not only have these birds built up an immunity to this toxin, they've actually developed little glands in their skin to hold it, which then rubs off on their skin and their feathers. The toxin is found in other parts of the body as well, just in lower amounts. I got two fun facts to go with these little guys. The first one of these birds that was noticed to be poisonous was the hooded pitui. It was discovered that they're poisonous because some museum caretakers were getting some skins and feathers ready to be displayed, and their hands went numb and started burning. That was probably an exciting day in the museum. I never saw Ben Stiller have to deal with that. The second fun fact is that there's no known antidote to the toxin in these guys. But there is a proposed countermeasure that is very strange. See, the batrachotoxin affects how your body handles sodium. And a proposed theory I found is that the toxin in pufferfish and the toxin in red tide both affect sodium channels in the opposite way. So in theory, they could counteract each other, but it would be kind of insane to do. It's kind of on the same level of thinking as the fact that you could technically cure syphilis by giving someone malaria. Next up, things are gonna get a little fishy, because we're talking about ciguatera fish poisoning. The way this one happens is that there's a certain kind of algae, also known as a dinoflagellate, that lives in reefs. This algae produces a chemical that is mostly harmless to fish called ciguatoxin. Our toxic algae then mixes in with other kinds of algae and accidentally gets eaten by herbivore fish, which is still at low levels because they don't eat a ton of it, but the issue is that then the predators eat the herbivore fish and their toxicity keeps getting higher and higher. Some fish that can be dangerous to eat because of this are like moray eels, groupers, barracuda, and red snapper. Because it's pretty likely for this to happen in small fishing areas, it's hard to nail down a real number on how many people get this each year, but it's probably somewhere between 50,000 and 500,000. It usually starts with normal things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, but then it moves on to the strange neurological issues. These can range from numbness in like the lips and extremities, vertigo, little muscle twitches, and my favorite, the reversal of the sensation of hot and cold. It can also cause chronic pain, hallucinations, and heart issues. Symptoms can last anywhere from a few weeks to 20 years, and because of this, it's sometimes misdiagnosed as multiple sclerosis. Dying from this isn't super common, it's only about one in a thousand cases, but it still doesn't sound fun, so I would avoid it. So the moral of this story is that just because more eels are a similar color to key lime pie doesn't mean they're as good. Next up, these two might not be my first choice of things to eat, but they are interesting. It's the garter snake and the California newt. Can you guess where the California newt lives? That's right, California. Even though California newts kind of look like they would be chamoy and orange flavored, they're actually death flavored. See, these guys are filled with tetrodotoxin, which is the same toxin that's in puffer fish. The California newt and its cousin, the rough skinned newt, are locked in an arms race with the garter snake. This arms race is so terrifying that it has only been rivaled by that of the USSR in the United States. See, what has happened is the garter snake is continuously evolving to be able to eat these newts. And then these newts evolve stronger toxin to scare off the garter snake, which then the garter snake just evolves for that. So we just gotten out of control at this point. There's a famous story where some cops showed up at a campsite because everyone there had died, and they realized it was because a newt got in the coffee pot. And because now the newts are so toxic, and when the garter snake eats them, they actually build up toxin in themselves, so they're now also toxic. And it's just a mess. Dang liberal newts. Our last two are a little quirky. They're not poisonous like those other meats we talked about. They're a little different. First up, we got what's called protein poisoning, and no, it's not what happens when you try to eat like the rock. The way that this one works is that if you eat only very lean meat, eventually your body will run out of fats and carbs to keep running. So essentially you will die of malnutrition even though your stomach is constantly full of meat. The animal most associated with this phenomenon is the rabbit. This can happen to people who are in kind of a wilderness area like lumberjacks, survivalists, soldiers, very easily because rabbits are often very plentiful because they breed like rabbits. Rabbits also tend to be much leaner than other meats you would normally eat. Rabbit has about two grams of fat per 100 grams of meat, where say a chicken wing has eight grams of fat per 100 grams of meat. Symptoms will start a few weeks after you switch your diet to this. It'll start with nausea, fatigue, eventually vomiting, and then eventually death. We even have a record of this happening to the Romans in 150 BC. So if your friend tells you to try out this new all rabbit diet, Maybe keep an eye on them. Last up, we have what is called hypervitaminosis A. As the name suggests, this is when you have too much vitamin A. The symptoms start with kind of normal things like dizziness, headache, nausea, but if you continue to hit too much of that A, your skin will peel off and your bones will crumble. You can get this from getting too many vitamin A supplements, but the main way people do this is through liver. One source that is kind of bold is called liver oil. It's very high in vitamin A. Do not drink a gallon of it. The main source for recorded issues for this though is when people try to eat the liver of Arctic animals. This is because vitamin A is fat soluble and these Arctic animals have a lot of fat to stay warm 
and it just kind of builds up. This includes polar bears, seals, moose, walruses, and even huskies. 500 grams of polar bear liver is enough to kill an adult human which is a little over a pound. It's also thought that because of its vitamin A content, about 100 grams of husky liver would kill you. The cure for this is to stop eating so much vitamin A, and that's about it. Another fun fact is that this isn't actually possible to get from fruits or vegetables because the beta carotene, which is the normal source of vitamin A in those things, is processed differently. So as you go through the rest of your day, just be careful, because if you eat the wrong meat, you might be dead meat.